Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Dev Siagi, and I welcome all of you to Rapid Leaks. Uh, today we have a very special guest, Mr. Vernon A. Springer, who's joining us from the land of the very team which hopes to defend its World Cup C20 title. Mr. Vernon A. Springer, what a pleasure it is to finally, finally have you with us, sharing the same screen and talking to you about the team which hopes to win a third World Cup title. And um, welcome, sir. How are you feeling today? I, it's a wonderful day here from Antigua right. and Barbuda. Right. And it's really a pleasure for me to be linking up with you. So the first question that I wanted to begin our interaction with is that um, before we get into the T20 World Cup and the depth of the West Indies and the other important subjects, what makes you uh, passionate and feel connected about cricket first and this team in particular, which you represent in your own capacity? The good thing about being a journalist is that one has to be able to make sure that you seek information and information means accurate information. Right. And I think sometimes in the Caribbean, we are driven by emotions. And so we don't take time out to be able to understand what's in front of us. And so many people uh, who are hosts and who are folks who call in on the radio stations or social media or make statements don't have stats, don't have facts. And so sometimes when you present the facts, that's when everybody tends to more or less back off. And I'll give you a quick example. We have had a international spat between Sir Kirtley Ambrose and Chris, and Chris Gale, Gale. In the part yeah. of the T20 World Cup. Yeah. But if you understand what Sir Kirtley Ambrose has said, to me it has been taken out of context by the, the media. And if you listen to the Chris Gale's interview, that in itself is also taken out of context because he's saying he has no respect for Sir Kirtley Ambrose. They're both legends in, the, in their own right. But yeah. what are the stats? What are the facts? What did Sir Kirtley say? Sir Kirtley said that he didn't feel and he doesn't think that Chris K should be an automatic selection. The word automatic. So if we're weighing up on the performances of Chris Gale, and, and I'll go into details there so you understand, for the last five years, 2015, he would have scored 167 runs with a high score of 90. 2016, 113 runs from five matches with a high score of 100. 2009, 73 matches, high score of 40. 2018, 18 runs, three matches, high score of 18. 2019, 20 runs, two matches, high score of 15. And 2021, 16 matches, 227 runs, high score of 67, average of 17.46. Faced 193 balls with a strike rate of 117.61, one half century um, to go with that. Now, if we're judging from stats there, based on the performance of Chris Gale, and I'm only just looking back at, let's say, from 2015 to 2021, with the pandemic hitting during 2020, right. it is fair enough based on Sir Kirtley's Ambrose analyst, who's an analyst and is breaking down the numbers that yeah. really Chris Gale is, does not deserve to be an automatic selection. Nobody's questioning his ability, but I'm also questioning where is he batting in this team? And I've always said, I'm, I'm going to go on record today again by saying, Chris Gale has to open the innings for the West Indies. And this sure. concept of Chris Gale batting at number three, I don't buy the myth. I think it's almost, you know... You could tell me that he's 41 and he's not seeing the ball. Chris Gale has to open the innings if he's going to strike for the West Indies. And mm -hmm. that is my point of view on the Chris Gale, Sir Kurt Ambrose matter. It was also good to see national hero of Antigua and Barbuda, and one of the greatest batsmen in the world, Sir Vivian Richards, coming in and sending a clear message to Chris Gale and says, let your bat talk. And I just hope that in the interest of West Indies cricket, that Chris Gale back will talk during the ICC T20 World Cup. Absolutely. Just to support your point, I also have some Chris Gale numbers here, sir. So, year 2018, 18 runs from three matches at a strike rate of 60, highest score of 18. The average of nine, would you believe it? 
these are t20 numbers of course year 2019 20 runs from two matches strike rate of 125 which was an improvement a double of what he got as 60 in the previous year but highest score of 15 what did we do what did he do in 2021 sir i have actually studied all his numbers from this year 227 um, uh, you know uh, 227 runs from 16 matches strike rate of 117 and a highest score of 67 but the point is one half century from uh, from uh, 16 matches so you you see that's 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 the gale we are talking about probably if he is if he is brought back to open the innings then all those issues are going to dissipate but that's chris gale and i understood uh, why you wanted to give this analogy is because you are somebody who concerns himself with the depth of cricket reporting the the depth and the incisiveness of cricket journalism which unfortunately not many people in our industry understanding uh, the responsibility of of holding the 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 dignity and context of cricket instead of just simply you know just writing about popcorn journalism so and i very much appreciate that about you mr springer because not only is it a pleasure to talk to you it is a pleasure to actually uh, observe you know the the perspectives that you have about west indies cricket all of which i'm going to now shift to my next question and it is like a very clear upfront question are the west indies going to win a third world cup title what does mr springer have to say on this on paper they would have the capabilities of of winning um this championship and if we look at the last team that represented the west indies in the region darren sami was the captain so there's no darren sami no samuel badre no solomon ben no carlos batwet no johnson charles but you would have had um chris gale jason holder who didn't play a game evan lewis no ashley nurse no dinish ramden you have an andrew russell no marlon samuels you have a lendel simmons and there's no jerome taylor so that was the last squad that would have represented the west indies in 2016 the 2016 yeah it's been yeah. half a decade so, since right so under a, a new leadership of kyron pollard which would have set out on a mission cricket west indies would have issued a press release early by indicating that for the first time in the build up to the t20 defending the t20 championship cricket west indies organized at least 17 t20 games on the back end of that you also had 33 t20 games in the caribbean premier league which was played in the warner park cricket stadium in saint kitts and nevis and high praise has got to come out to the to the groundsmen and to the organization on the ground who made that possible inside a biosecure bubble at the Marriott Hotel to be able to execute that tournament. So originally, Kyron Pollard would have been building his squad around a Chris Gale, an Andrew Russell, and the likes and of Alendo Simmons and Evan Lewis and a DJ Bravo. So he would have known what sort of squad he wanted. He would have been ably assisted by the head coach Phil Simmons, and they would have come up with a master plan in terms of deciding what they want to do. Can they defend? Yes, they can defend. But I think they're going to have to play some extraordinary cricket, and so they can't rely on a Pollard. They can't re- yeah. re- rely on a, on a Chris Gale. They can't rely on a Evan Lewis, and so it's going to no. take outstanding feeling and outstanding bowling for them to win the championship. I expect to see some young emerging stars in Nicholas Poran. I expect to see a Hetmyer coming through. I also expect to see once given an opportunity an Obed McCoy, who I think has got great ability. And Absolutely. Hayden Walsh, based on the practice game that I saw him bowl, once he concentrate, I think that he also could be a trump child, trump card in in this tournament for the West Indies bowling attack. Right. You remember that Fabian Allen, to me, is also one of the best fielders in the world. Also, and an amazing the return spin. fielder of his own bowling, right? Yes, and his left arm spin, I think, with the new ball, can also help. If, if you look back at that at the 2016 team you would have looked at badre you would have looked at ben and you yeah. would have said to yourself okay we don't have narain but we had badre and we had ben who between them you would have got eight overs so kairo pollard in terms of his spinning attack would have to figure out now how am i going to be able to bowl fabian allen am i going to play fabian allen and hayden wall to the same team And Those now there is also there is also have. the problem of plenty. There's Rostin Chase in there as well, with his off spin. Yes, and and it, it depends on 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 where they're playing. 
and how best they're going to be able to fit in a roster and chase. Because it doesn't necessarily mean that Rust and Chase is going to play all the games. They might pick right. horses for courses, depending on the situation where they're playing in the T20 Absolutely. World Cup. Absolutely. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to uh, a question from at least, which to my untrained mind, uh, at least squares up as a huge problem and may just become a behemoth. And remember the name behemoth, unless this, this elephant in the room goes unchecked. And you and me have had a discussion on this offhand uh, two months back uh, when I called you differently at, at a different time from India. Ocean Thomas, no doubt about his talent, no doubt about his pace, no doubt about him hitting the deck hard. But don't you think that there is a real concern with the economy, the fact that he can easily leak runs? I think, yes, one practice game defeat does not really define you or cannot should not make you not chin up for the games ahead. But the guy went for around 9 to 10 runs and over. He has been leaking runs. And there is this tendency to consistently deliver the ball in the batsman's zone, the slot. I think batsmen like Rishabh Pant, Kohli, others are just going to feast on him if he just doesn't make some changes and adjustments to his line and also, importantly, length. What do you say, sir? Don't get caught by... And I say caught, I'm talking about don't get caught at point by looking back. Oshin Thomas has got pace. And on any he given has, day. No doubt about it. Yeah. And so when you're a fast bowler, and I'm only just telling you from a cricket coach perspective, once you're a fast bowler, you're going to go for runs. So you don't need to worry about the runs. What you, what you worry about is the wicked column. So if Oshin Thomas picks up four for 32, that's, that's a bonus for the West Indies. And if he gets early wickets, then he's going to put pressure on, 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 on any team. And so I think that it, it's going to be that. So the, the main mission is, yes, he's going to leak runs, but we have to understand that he's a fast bowler and he's still learning his craft and he will get better. You don't get better sitting on the bench. You get better by playing games. And so he's somebody most, in the first uh, two overs. He's got, one of your he gets most a of uh, important statements about Ocean Thomas was that the kid has to put some uh, miles under his legs. You remember? Yes, but he has improved in terms of his fitness. I will say that to you. And in the T20 tournament that he played and the matches that he played, you could see gradual improvement. So for, based on when I, I last had the conversation with you, he's been 65% improved from when we last spoke. Awesome. So make no mistake, Mr. Mr. Springer, you and me are batting for the same team here. It's just that Indian blood flows in my veins and West Indian blood flows in your veins. And I'm sure <laughs> when... When this West Indies uh, interview will be seen by my folks at Rapid Leaks, they're they are not going to be surprised that an Indian is espousing for the cause of the Caribbean cricket because that's always been, been the case. You know, in a, in a Sachin Tendulkar... But, 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 but in, in fairness, Dev, the world needs West Indies cricket. West Indies cricket is a brand. Um, and we can go back from, from Sir Garfield Sobers, leading up to Sir Viv Richard, leading up to Brian Charles Lara. Leading up to the fast. You see the smile that West brings Hall. to the face. You see the yeah. smile that brings to the face. So the world needs West Indies cricket, and so that's why it's important for a fit Andrew Russell and a Kyron Pollard and a DJ Bravo to drive this T20 World Cup. And once the um, West Indies fire, everybody will be excited. I'm just going to deliberately infuse a bit of laughter, a bit of light-hearted banter. A fit and consistent Andre Russell is like imagining. Uh, uh, is like imagining desert in Switzerland, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean he's a, he's a great guy. He's a great guy. Uh, over mm. over to the batting department. A huge challenge for for and a huge opportunity too for Nicholas Puran, sir. His first mm. ever T Twenty mm. World Cup. He's a he's the next rising star along with Hetmeyer. I yeah. think these two are the most enterprising players that the world is going to see from this World Cup on. And right. you could, you could, one has to give credit to head coach Ricky Pontin, who you could see got into the mindset of Hetmeyer and where he batted him. I know a stint number of times the, during the, Delhi the IPL. Yeah. Yes, I know, I know during the IPL, a number of times Ian Bishop questioned that maybe Hetmeyer should have come out before. I think what Ricky Pontin was trying to get the young man to understand is that you are a match winner, you can change a game. You have all the shots in the world. What you need is a mindset. What you need is an understanding of the game. And sometimes I think that Hetmeyer tries to hit the ball too hard. If Hetmeyer keeps his shape 
a little longer and keeps his eye focused on the ball, he'll be the There's best nothing player that can in the world like Nicholas Poran. And yeah. so I, I think Ricky Ponting was trying to get him into a game situation and a game scenario to say, hey, you have to take your team across the line. It is the same thing that will be applying to a Nicholas Poran. Nicholas Poran in the West Indies team has to understand that the batting choice rests with him in the middle order, where he can be able to come, rotate the strike, and at the same time, take the game away from any he team. Is the and I think fulcrum. these two guys are excited. He is the fulcrum, correct me if I'm wrong, against which the West Indian, other West Indian batters are going to revolve, right? Well, the, the two of them easily are the, are the best players of spin bowling in the West Indies team in the middle order. And, and this is what they bring um, in, in terms of the team. And if you look at the approach, whether they're going to play Shamsi or whoever, they're technically easily the two better young players of spin bowling and also of fast bowling. And if you miss your length with, yeah. with both of them, you can disappear. Absolutely. I just wanted to, you know, add on to one point when you when you spoke about Shimron Hetmeyer. So uh, I would just want to rewind the clocks back and go back to the 2019 Men's 50 ICC World Cup, which was held in England. The crucial game uh, remembered for Carlos Brathwaite's uh, heart-wrenching century, the only he has struck so far in his, in his, in his ODI career. So West Indies went down by a, a very scant margin to New Zealand. But what people forget is that who were the two batsmen who revived the West Indian innings in their run chase? So uh, one of them was actually Shimron Hetmeyer. And, and what Hetmeyer had done is that he had joined forces with Chris Gale in the middle. And Vernon, sir, I correct me if I'm wrong, what he actually created in the middle was like a beautiful mini gem. Uh, albeit it hasn't really gotten the importance it so deserves, richly deserves even to this day. How? Of 45 balls, he created 54 runs against a New Zealand attack, which featured spinners okay which had trent bolt okay which had uh, which had some of the most uh, one of the most balanced bowling uh, combinations new zealand have ever unearthed against the west indies at, at, at the mother of all sporting battles right this guy reached his half century with a massive blow to the to the stands the next delivery uh, the i think it was loki ferguson who got him out he understood that uh, you know he had tricked Hetmeyer. He had basically played to the gallery, incited him, given him a couple of balls in the, in, the, in the slot and he bowled a slower one and he just failed to read it and the, and the timber were disturbed and what happened after that were quick wickets. You know, uh, then that led to a spiral decline but I'm talking about the importance of Hetmeyer to have played that dead devil of an innings. It might have only resulted, yielded in 54 runs which are paltry from when you compare to Rohit Sharma's 150s or Kohli's 100s. But the value of, the, of those 54 runs were beautiful in that he was doing the bulk of the scoring with Chris Gale at the other end. You know, So he has already proven himself at the highest international level that, okay, dude, I can set in, give myself time, play the spinner. Sir, his short square of the wicket are fascinating. He uses the depth of the crease just as well as Darren Bravo does. Just as well as the great Brian Charles Lara did. Um, and I'm not trying to compare Lara with Hetmeyer, but why not in, in, in the long run? So Hetmeyer, you're absolutely bang on point when you say that this is the guy who has to be told that, listen, dude, you can do wonders. You are, you are a magic kid. And he's somebody who was not withered away from the scene. You remember, there were so many other under-19 players from the West Indies. We need more people like Alik Athanase, you know, to represent West Indies. I'm, I'm, I'm betting big on that kid. Uh, Kristen Kalicharan, the other people. Kimani Milis, one person I'm, I'm following. I've been following his career very closely. So let's hope that the youngsters come to the party. I wanted to ask you, where does Jason Holder stand in this current squad of the T20 World Cup? What are we going to see of him? Well, Jason Hall is not Jason Hall is in the reserve, and so we just have to. Why is that? Yeah. Why is that? Isn't well, that? I don't think that. No, it's not. Um, if you look at the balance of the team, um, who would Jason Holder have replaced? And I'm and, I, and I'm picking your brain. And so you know, we we have to be practical. You know, again, we have to come down off of our high horses with our emotions. We 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 are ready. When, when you look at the, the all-rounding spot, that, that is already booked. Where, where would Jason Holder have fitted? Certainly, 
since you've asked me certainly so i know we are betting big on chase because of the recent cpl exploits which were thunderous thunderous is the, is my adjective for him it just came out of nowhere and it's brilliant but holder any day can do what roston chase can do if you no, want to talk no, about the no no they they two they two they they two different maker players two different maker players and roston chase performance in 2020 carbon premier league and in 2021 earned him The Marlon Samuels. Jason Holder is not a Marlon Samuels. Raston Chase is almost. Nobody is a Marlon Samuels for that matter. It's only Marlon well, Samuels. But, but Marlon Samuels is Marlon. When I when I'm talking about being Marlon Samuels, I'm talking about the role to play. You have somebody who can come and bowl off spin, and you have somebody who can be able to come and pick over and get your twenty, thirty, forty. That is what Raston Chase brings to this team once he plays. So he has those qualities. He has also shown that. T20 cricket. If you play proper cricket shots, you can be effective. As compared to us, be believing that we have to hit the ball out to the ground all the time. What I want to see happening for the West Indies is to make sure that we rotate the strike in the middle and to be able to make sure that we execute by turning over the strike, getting singles, and running hard and putting in the intensity all the time. Right. You know, I've always been a Roston Chase supporter. The moment that glorious one thirty-seven against India shone brightly at Jamaica, twenty sixteen, I have never forgotten that innings. Yes, it was, and I'm talking about the Test match. So we came, as in the Indians came uh, visiting the Caribbean, and just at a time where we thought that we are going to simply wipe off the West Indies and make it like like a, like a white wash or black wash or whatever it is. This guy tagged forces with Sean uh, with Shane Dowrich. I beg your pardon, and we saw a magnificent. Mat saving stand, take sense uh, center fold so much so that Virat Kohli came and put his arms around his shoulders, and he, you know, he was. We were witnessing the rise of Rossin Chase. Then I remember Rossin Chase fired a magnificent half century against a very strong bowling attack in Afghanistan. This happened in the in the pre-COVID era when uh, West Indies were hosting Afghanistan. Rather, you can say Afghanistan were hosting the West Indies in India. All these matches were played in Lucknow, in the city of Lucknow, in Uttar Pradesh. Shay Hope used to be the opener, as he still is. But Chase uh, reached a career best uh, ODI fifty. I I think it was against Afghanistan only. So he has always demonstrated that, and I still think that it's a it's a very brave hunch that we have taken. Hunch because his performances at the end of the day will speak for them, and there is no doubt to there is no reason to doubt what he can do. Definitely, but I still feel um, Jason Holder just being in the reserves. I I mean I mean I don't know. To, to me personally. and it's not about being emotional or whatever because the only cricketer i have been most emotional about in my outpouring of support was always chandpal followed by brian lara but uh, but i think i think jason holder did uh, does definitely merit in, in fact carlos brathwaite as well does merit uh, they had to be in the squad i don't know you know the decision uh, rests with the with the with the, with the west indian cricket board uh, minds those in the leadership positions but having said that uh, Is there one player who you would like to have seen in the squad but isn't, and who is that, and why? I think we're past that stage, so I don't need to look back. I just need to look ahead. What I want to see for the West Indies going forward is their practice games. They have to now start approaching the tournament, knowing very well that it doesn't matter which team steps out onto the pitch. That this is the men in Maru. This is the West Indies team, and so the intensity has to be up all the time. In the first game. Um, that I saw against Pakistan, they 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 seem to be feeling their way around. I know it was hot, but I want to see the intensity build up because winning is a habit, and in a T20 tournament you have to go through a cycle where you lose a couple of games. So it, they've lost in their first game against Pakistan. I want to see improvement advancing all the time, and I want to see them uplift themselves in the field, take all of the catches because I think. A West Indies team that is unsung and take all of their catches is going to be a dangerous team. They have natural athletes led by Fabian Allen, Andrew Russell, Kyron Pollard, DJ Bravo, and combined with uh, uh, wicketkeeping skills of Nicholas Pooran and and Hetmyer in the field. Over the giant people, by the way. Athletes. Once they can be able to combine with Hayden Walsh and they can be be able to lift their games where they can hit stumps consistently, take their catches. West Indies is going to be a hard team to to, to negotiate with. Yeah. So Absolutely. I'm 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 banking on them to be able to get to the next stage game by game. But you know, you know what you what you just did there. 
you know what you just did there you did a denzel washington don't fall backwards fall forwards and don't fall but rise you know so i could see that and uh, i don't doubt that because positivity is the way to go positivism is the essential key and my and might i also add um and kindly don't think that this is a cynic this is a west indian fan i've always i grew up in a household supporting sachin uh which supported sachin and i was always on the other side of the table i was branded an anti national for supporting mr brian charles lara of port <laughs> of spain no that i regret it at all my concern is and my worry is being a west indian supporter and i love the in case some indian fans are watching i love the indian cricket team as well so don't hound me don't scold me um too many no balls of late t20 internationals too many no balls i think that's one area the extras we need to be very cautious of that what do you think make them work yeah. hard for every run well it it and and we're not perfect life is not perfect you we will make mistakes um but is a situation where like i said dev let's sit back and enjoy the world cup let's give god thanks that you know our opportunities provided for our cricketers let's not be harsh on them but most of all to remember the west indies are the defending champions the defending t20 champions and with that in mind we have to make sure that we're going into this tournament nobody is giving us a, a, everybody has written us off west indies have always been the underdogs in in these championship but what i can say to you in those dressing rooms of the other teams around the world they know that on any given day the west indies the west are the indians most dangerous team in the in the world dangerous. and yeah. kyron pollard has something to prove and it's not over yet a championship for the west indies guys. will be able to make sure that this will be a remarkable achievement following in the success of a darwin sami who i don't feel has really got the recognition from the folks in the caribbean in terms of what he has done for west indies cricket but that's another topic on another day and for that day we are looking forward to on drives interaction with him certainly right so uh, my parting thoughts are um, that uh, watch out for the west indies destructive dangerous detrimental to health and to anyone who takes them lightly and my parting thoughts on this uh, figurehead of west indian cricket in his own way on the other side of the screen if you're ever having a low day if you're ever having uh, a day without a vision just listen to this humble humane down to earth compassionate and at the end of the day simple human being talk from his heart combining his mental powers about a sport he was born to serve about cricket which he was born to excel in about an inspiration he is going to become serving lives through fantastic analytical cricket content it's been a pleasure to talk to you and i wish our team the west indies and india also all the best i hope the ideal scenarios india meeting west indies in the finals but mr springer has been a fantastic chat i hope some of my questions uh, didn't take you by surprise because it was a free wheeling chat the first of which uh, and many of which are going to happen so thank you for your time thank you to rajat on the other hand at rapid leaks and uh, mr springer rapid leaks is one of the fastest growing media platforms is going to change the way content presentation is done in india slowly but steadily for sure thank you um, and it is indeed a pleasure for you to be able to give me this opportunity and i salute you thank you thank you dev and from the caribbean to india let's hope that we have a west indies india final it would really, be massive it would be lovely it would be lovely thank you sir sayonara rally around uh, the west indies bye bye thank you so much rally rally around the west, west indies. indies let's rally around tyron pollard and the men in maroon awesome awesome for the west indies take care guys thank you so much bye bye